Welcome to today's unboxing of the Ubiquiti Unify APAC LR. Man, that's a mouthful. Intro music! Alright, let's begin. I'm gonna go ahead and unbox this thing, but first things first, need my coffee. Mm. Alright, so it comes in this little sheath thingy. It's got a kind of holographic thingamajig there. Serial number on the side. Here's the model designation. Unify APAC LR. That means wireless AC. It means it comes after wireless N. Should be faster. Let's go ahead and take this thing off. Unassuming cardboard box. Open her up. Paper. Styrofoam. UFO. I'm going to tell you, it's not quite the shape I was expecting from the pictures. Usually you see it just dead on like this, but it's actually, it's got quite a convex kind of shape to this thing. It's actually, I don't know, kind of deep. There's a uh, light bar, blue, and I think blue LED that runs all the way around this thing. So this whole ring lights up. I'm going to figure out if I can turn that off or not. kind of suck to be in a room with that all the time. Uh, this is a back plate for mounting. Spin it one way, pops off, screw it to the wall. It also comes with a steel mounting bracket. Uh, screw it to the wall. Stick the unit on it and twist the unit, and it locks into place here. It's a little tab. There you go. I'd take that off for now. And on this side, you can see that there is a uh, Ethernet port. This Ethernet port is uh, responsible for both data transfer and power to the unit. This is a PoE, Power Over Ethernet device. Also, a little uh, looks like a cutout here. Work with me. There we go. Pops out. Did not break it. There's kind of this little uh, I don't know peg fits right in there. To route your Ethernet cord in here if you got a flush against a wall. I'm likely just gonna move it around my house until I figure out what location is best for it, but that's it for the main unit. Like I said before, steel mounting bracket it looks like. Power cord. PoE e adapter with some kind of Thing on the bottom of this looks like I can also mount this. Yeah, it looks like that comes off, and this is this type of mounting plate of some kind. Line in, PoE out. Plug it into power, turns that thing on. No need for a PoE switch. You can use a PoE switch, and Ubiquiti will sell you one too. They're expensive. Anyway, moving on. More paper, stickers. Mounting screws. That's it. Okay, two things I'd like to point out. One, this is a backplate for the PoE adapter. It's a bit of a bitch to get off. Thought I was gonna break it, but you kinda it moves one step and then you gotta really give it the business to get it uh, off. There you go. Pre-drill the holes. Stick your screws in there. Take your PoE adapter, probably go this way, upwards like this on a wall. Pop it in place. A lot easier to get it in than it is to get it out, contrary to most things in life. And this is a backplane. Same for uh, you know, the piece of metal on the back of your motherboard where you screw your heatsink to. If you were mounting this to something like a hanging ceiling, where it's basically just foam, put this behind it, screw through the ceiling, Match up the holes, bingo, bango, you got yourself a mounting bracket for a hanging ceiling. So the beauty of this setup is software-defined networking. This is controller-based software that allows you to manage all of your wireless hotspots across a wide uh, either WAN or LAN. You can have several of these things working in unison, and I don't know if you can see this. On-site management station, I have chosen to deploy a Ubuntu VM. Uh, yep, runs on Linux. I have chosen to run a Ubuntu uh, server VM. 
that has the Ubiquiti controller software running on it. And we're going to plug this bad boy into the network. The software should recognize it. And we should be off to the races, set to replace all my crappy little uh, $10 on rebate uh, wireless and net gear junk we got lying around. Because I'm done with consumer grade plastic crap. Hopefully this proves a worthy venture. Hope so. Let's get it plugged in. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and set this up for my proof of concept. I've chosen to set it up next to my uh, state of the art 64 bit gaming console. PoE adapter, and go ahead and take my network cable from my LAN, plug in the LAN side, and out comes PoE Ethernet. Go ahead and plug it in. There we go. Hey, there is a light. Cool. PoE running through here. Go ahead and plug it into the network jack with finesse. Quite a lot of finesse, actually. There we go. Magic. There we go. Blinky light. As you can see, we have a light on the uh, PoE adapter. It means it's providing power. Got our yellow cable plugged into our little UFO. Light ring is on. I think it's some kind of whitish color right now. Maybe blue? I don't know. Looks white to me. Gonna go ahead and jump over the computer here and walk through the UniFi setup wizard, which is pretty freaking basic. Next. No devices discovered. Discover it now. Yes, of course. Discover. Discover it harder. There it is showing up. All I had to do was go back, forward again, and it updated. There's the address of my little access point, version, and MAC address. Okay, it's going to want a SID and a key, and then looks like this next one's a password, and then finish. So I'm going to go ahead and decide what options I want, and I'll meet you on the flip side. Okay, so here we are on the management screen. And as you can see, got a bunch of gray options here. I was able to add my device, which we can see here. The status is pending approval, which means we have to adopt this device. Let's go ahead and adopt it now. It looks like it's going through the adoption process. And I'm looking over at the access point right now, and it has turned blue. And there we go. It looks like it has changed to connected. The light is blue on the unit. What I really want to do is go back to the dashboard, and it looks like we have WLAN. Wireless LAN is connected. Connected and stable. One access point, zero users. Works for me. And here it is, the device with the uh, blue light on, which means it is connected. This will change colors to red if there are any issues or it becomes disconnected. Actually, you can operate these without a controller entirely. They won't be unified, but since I have one, I don't really mind. If the controller goes down for whatever reason, this will still offer up its SSID and keep maintain the wireless network and clients that are connected to it. You just won't be able to manage it in the same fashion. So what I'm going to do is I have my... Uh, Nexus 6 here, I'm gonna go, or 6P. Right now, this is my current connection. I can see my signal strength is 54, and this is on my crappy plastic consumer grade neck gear junk. It is pretty terrible. I'm gonna go ahead and connect to my electric lettuce LAN, or wireless network. Connecting, IP address, connected. Link speed, 243. That sounds fantastic. So there you go. Can't wait to start using this thing, test out some HD video streaming and some other uh, file transfers uh, across my laptop and things like that. I will perhaps upload a second video of my review of actually using the unit and any problems or, or nuances that may come up in managing and using the unit. And I hope to also mount it somewhere more satisfying than in front of my uh, yeah, state-of-the-art 64-bit gaming console. Look for more videos about this unit in the future and or managing it. And I will catch you guys on the flip side. Take it easy. Peace out.